Hey guys, it's Agon Citrimer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to be introducing you to a new tool called cloud.include.com. This tool allows you to collaborate like if you were collaborating through Google Docs, but with augmented reality. So think of the Google Docs in a way that, you know, you're inviting other people, they're coming in, they're making changes, you're seeing those changes in real time. But with augmented reality, they're going to make changes in 3D objects, you're going to be moving those around and then you're gonna be able to see those changes with the HoloLens. You can also see them through the editor, which is why I think anybody can use this tool regardless if you have a HoloLens tool or not. So what I'm gonna show you is playing behind the scenes. I have the editor view open, I'm making some changes to a frog, resizing the frog, and then I'm gonna show you how I can see the changes through the HoloLens. So let's jump into that tool and I start looking at it. All right guys, I'm gonna show you how Enclu Cloud works and I am really fascinated by this tool because it's really cool for if you're, you know, if you want other people that have a HoloLens to interact with you and build things together, they're, they're actually the right company for you. And, and I'm going to show you why by walking you through this. So you can sign up by just creating a new account and just clicking in here and sign up. There are two different options. You can do the free option or you can do the enterprise option. One of the things that I got from them is that the free versus enterprise is really not limited features that you're not going to get on the free version. The only addition on the enterprise is that you're going to get, you know, private instances of hosting for assets, full access to customer success, and it's basically more for enterprise. I mean, that is the name. If you want to get started as an individual and you have the HoloLens and you want to try to build something with somebody else, then I would try, you know, the free version, see how it works. And then if you want to move to something like this, then, you know, you can make that move. But in my case, I did the free version and I've been playing around with it, so I'm gonna show you how that works. So once you get your account, you're gonna just you know land on cloud.include.com sign in. You're gonna click on login with the username and password you created. They have free few different experiences, not free, <laughs> few different experiences. You can go from you know chapter one through chapter four. There's also one that they did onboarding with me. So if you wanna do a call with them, you can do that. The one that I'm gonna show you today is going to be the Dilmer uh, Superpowers 1.1. And you can see here, you can specify the name, you can create your own experience, you can set the description, you can add any collaborators, and these people don't need to have an account yet. They can just create an account at the time that you have, you know, that, that you create your own account. And the cool thing with these is they don't need to have a HoloLens device. They can just basically do it through the browser, just like I'm gonna show you. So. It could be that you're the one that has that has a HoloLens and then they don't have a HoloLens and and they jump in and collaborate or, or either either of you, if you don't have the HoloLens, you can still make this work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and click on load. And once you load it, it's going to look similar to, and I say Unity because this looks kind of like Unity. You have your hierarchy, you have your scene, your globals, your script. It's gonna be a little bit different, but the terminology is gonna be the same. You have your library of assets in here. There's a login here that you can look at. The library shows you, you know, all the different type of assets that they have available for you. So for instance, if you want to use, in this case, these are the assets that are in my project, but let's say that you wanted to add a new asset because you didn't have 3D assets, you just wanted, wanted to experiment. You can click here in a space and they have a lot of different assets that they have available. You can also look at primitives, you can look at plans, you can look at effects. If you want to create a Halloween experience, they have Halloween assets for you. So a lot of cool things in here. Out of the box, they also have components for UI. And to be honest, I haven't looked at all of these ones, I'm just looking at them right now. And you can also upload your own assets. And there's going to be one thing that I'm going to show you on the next video. This one, I'm just going to show you the UI and then also how we, how we can share this with the HoloLens, so these are some of the assets you have, your hierarchy on the left side. So this is kind of like the editor in Unity. In fact, the components here kind of look like that, right? Like you have your, your transformation tool here, like if I hit F and I can select an object and I can basically, you know, use my middle mouse button to, to pan around. I can also hold control and then also my left mouse and I can basically rotate the camera. And there's a lot of navigation like that that you can look at. You also have your world. If I want to change this from local to you know world, I can I can toggle it. It's kind of hard to see, but there's actually a check mark in there. I think they this is something that they're working on. And then you can also change the basically the selection components in here if you wanted to. 
The other cool thing that you can do is you can go, you know, to full mode, and if you want to work in full mode, you can do that as well. You can look at some of the assets that they already have, which are really cool. Like some of these assets are really, really pretty. And if I want to select that object, let's say I want to select a butterfly, or perhaps that object, I can do that. Let's see if I can select the butterfly. It's kind of hard to select. There we go. So I can select that butterfly. It looks like that she has or he has the particle effect, so that's why the pivot point was there. But if I wanted to move this, I can press, I can, you know, press the Q key. And let's go ahead and move up a little bit, and then I'll just rotate my camera. And if I wanted to move the butterfly, I can move it around. And, and the cool thing with this, and you can say, Dilmer, but this is something that it's already available on Unity. This is nothing new. But the cool thing with this is this is like Google Docs, right? Like you, in Google Docs, somebody jumps in and you edit edit the document and you see those changes. So if somebody else was logged in and you invited that collaborator and you move that butterfly, they're going to see the changes right away. So the power of this comes in when you have many, many people logged in and you are on your HoloLens, so you're able to see this experience in the HoloLens versus you know, somebody else just running on the editor. So that's where the power comes in is you guys are creating a real-time environment that multiple people can collaborate. You can prototype, let's say that you're a manufacturer and you're creating a motorcycle, then you can you know, be build, building the motorcycle in the way that you want to build it with that other person. So I can also do a lot of things in here. Like I said, if I, wanna, if I want to resize this, I can resize this. If I want to rotate it, I can rotate it. If I want to you know, move it, I can move it. So very similar to what you can do in Unity today. I can also click in here if I want to see the eyes of you or if I want to see the perspective, you know, if I want to look at the Z axis, or if I want to, you know, look at the Y axis, I can also do that or go back to perspective. And so everything works just like it would in Unity. Let's go ahead and go back into, there we go. Trying to learn the, the, the components right now, so that's why I'm kind of getting a little bit lost. The actual tools, there we go. So I'm gonna go back into regular mode. I can click on this X or you can just click on this icon here. And like I said, on the, on the left side, you have all, all your different components. So just like I can do here by selecting, you know, selecting an object that shows me the particle play, I can also look at the, let's see if I can select the, the actual frog. For some reason, I have a hard time selecting the frog. Let me see if I can select some other selection. There we go. So that's the environment. Let me see if I can do the frog in this case. Maybe I need to get closer to the frog. There we go. So I got the frog, and if I expand this, you can see that that's the node that that's on. I can look at the actual component. If I want to make it visible or invisible, I can click on that. If I want to lock it so that I can't really move it, you can click on that icon. So a lot of the, the game object selection that you see in Unity, it's available in here. Other things that you can also look at, you can look at if you want to see live updates. So it looks like this is trying to launch it's trying to update Epic, so let's go ahead and close out of that. So if you want to see live updates, I'm going to, it, by default, this is set to true. I don't know why I wouldn't want to see it. Maybe if I am a designer and I don't want to see the other people changes just yet, you can just disable that. You can look at ambient lighting, ambient color. So if I want to change this to be more of a red color, you can change the ambient color. I'm going to go ahead and undo. So you can also do Control Z if I wanted to do that. If I want to change the intensity here, I can change the intensity. I'm not seeing any changes in the editor view just yet, but those are some of the options that are available. Also, quality settings, looks like they have WebGL, Android, iPhone, and Windows. And for the pixel count, let me see if I can get close to these, the actual frog. And if I increment the pixel count, and if you change the te texture resolution, you can do that. And then anti-aliasing, it's available, so particles. So different settings on the, on the actual editor, you can also enable the you know shadows and shadow mask, blank weights and so on. Global settings, if I want to see the grid, you know I can toggle it if I don't want to see it. So if I want to see it, just enable it. If you don't want to see gizmos, so you can enable gizmos and see the lights kind of went off and also the little the access options in here, isometric and perspective view, also went away. And then if I want to change the background color, I can also change the background color. I like what it was, so let me see if I can undo that. There we go. But if you want to change it to something else, you can do let's do something like that. You can change it. There are also a lot of scripts in here. Like if you if you look at, for instance, if we wanted to perhaps select the 
the actual frog right now and we can go back into the hierarchy. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this option for some reason I can't really select that easy. But if I select the frog and you look at some of the components in here, this also has an inspector just like it does in Unity. You can look at the name, in this case it's Pink Toad, and if I want to change this to maybe this is Pink Toad Dilmer for whatever reason, and let's just not put a backslash there. You can see that that changes in there. Or if I want to do Pink Toad Cool, you can change that. You can also add a description here, so this is a test for Pink Toad. You can also add that there. It doesn't show here, but it shows in here. You can also look at the asset that we're currently using, and the assets are, they're kind of like how the elements on the game view show and the editor view show with respect to what we have in here. So whenever you want to create a game object, that's a different process. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But right now, this is the asset that it shows. I can also change the position here. So if I wanted to change this from, let's see, we can do about six. And I think I, I need to hit the refresh button. So let's go ahead and go back. So you can see that that changed that. And that actually, I think that was too much. Let's go ahead and do zero. And there we go. So if I do, let's do one. There we go. So yeah, so six was way, way beyond the screen. So you can change it in here. We can go back to zero and then hit refresh and that's going to get it applied. Or I can simply just go ahead and, you know, do my selection here and, and just move it by using the handles. You can do that or you can do it in here. So that's up to you. You can do that with rotation, with scale, and then you can also look at variables and scripts. This object doesn't have a script, but one of the cool things that I include did is if you want to add some scripts, you can click it here, here in assets. And these are just assets like textures, like 3D objects, like, you know, I think music as well is bundled into assets. But if you want to do, if you want to use pretty fine scripts, you can look at some of these ones that they already have. Let's see if we can find. You can do, you know, if you want to do a spin, you can do a pulse. I think, I think this one was really cool. So you can drag it and drop it into here. And as soon as I do that and hit refresh, we should see this pulsating at some point. And if it doesn't show pulsating, that means that the size is not that much. So we can do something like, let's see, what if I do five? And we can do the grow time. Let's go ahead and do that. And for some reason, it's not getting applied. And this might be because I'm just learning about this process right now. But let me try that one more time. Let me see if I can, if I can make this work. And let's go back. And I'm going to click on variables, activation message. It should work, and I don't know why it doesn't work. If that doesn't work, we're just going to go ahead and just try a different game object. But basically, you specify the growth factor, the growth time. Let's try a different object. I'm going to go ahead and drag, because they show me how to do this from the beginning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and add a planet. And this is what I thought when I was using this tool. I could drag it and drop it. So another way that you can do this is, I think, is you have to go in here. You have to click on Create Asset. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new asset. So see how it doesn't show me that it had, this is like creating a game object, right? So you need to tell it, give it a name. So this one, I'm just going to say planet. So that's the name that I'm going to give it. And then what you got to do is you got to drag and drop this element here onto the, let me see if I can do this. And create, there we go. And I'm going to drag it and drop it here, maybe. There we go. And it, and it did do it. So if I go ahead and undo, let me go ahead and do, see how it says empty, but if I go ahead and drag and drop this, it now, say, it now says Arca, so that is the name of the game object. And if we go here, I'm not seeing the actual object, so let me see. Let me see where my planet, what my planet is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drag it and drop it into my environment. And now we have our planet there, and there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and resize it. Maybe, maybe this is too small. Or maybe I'm doing something something completely wrong because I don't see I don't see it right now. I'm gonna look at these objects and see. Let's go ahead and try that one more time. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it and say, yep, I'm gonna delete that object. I'm going to go into my environment, click on create. I'm gonna say that I'm gonna add an asset. In this case, I'm just going to let's go ahead and grab something else. Maybe let's go ahead and drag and drop a spaceship. 
And now I can see the spaceship. I don't know why that other asset wasn't working, but they're probably gonna tell me that I was doing something wrong. More than sure that I was doing something wrong, but anyway, so here's our, here we have our spaceship, right? And what I'm gonna do with the spaceship is, let me go ahead and go back to that. And I can double click on this guy. And you guys are probably getting frustrated with how slow I am with this tool, but that's fine. We'll, we'll learn together. So here we go, we have, a, we have our spaceship and I'm gonna make it, let's make it a little bit smaller. I'm trying to, to use the tools like if I was gonna use in Unity, but I am not as familiar with the tool yet. So I think R is for resize, there we go. And then Q is going to be for, I wish everything was mapped exactly as it is in Unity, but it's not, so that's okay, we'll, we'll figure it out together. So we have, a, we have a spaceship, right? And that has basically a name, he has a description, I didn't have a description. So what I wanted to do is show you how to add a script. So we're gonna go here into scripts. And the one that I was trying to use was the pulsating script. So let me go ahead and drag it and drop it in here. And I'm gonna go into variables and I'm going to go ahead and, let's go ahead and refresh. And the thing that I don't see is why this is not getting activated even though I'm telling it to pulsate. And there we go, so I'm telling it to pulsate, and for some reason it's not, it's not doing it, but that's okay. We'll go, let me go ahead and go back here. And it tells me the growth factor is gonna be that, the growth time is gonna be that, and activation message. Okay, so if this doesn't work, let's try a different script. I'm going to go ahead and go into here. I'm going to remove the script, and let's try a different script. I don't know why that one is not working going to do the rotation. As you can see that that one is working. I don't know why the other one is not working, but maybe because it's, it, they're still working on it, they're trying to get it to work. But you can see that I can change the speed if I wanted to make it faster. I can make it faster. Let go, let's go ahead and do, let's, let's increment those numbers. You can see how the rotation is working. And let's do five in here. So, Let's go ahead and go back in here. I'm gonna remove that. I'm gonna remove that script. I'm gonna click in here, go ahead and remove it. And then I'm gonna change the rotation to zero, zero, zero. And let me see what else we have in here. So I'm gonna do a spin. There we go, that's, that, I think that's simpler. And we can do, the duration is gonna be 60 seconds. And there we go. You're gonna see how that, by adding just, you know, one script that is already pretty fine, I can, I can make the spaceship, you know, rotate. The other cool thing that I can also do here, and, and this is something that I'm not really familiar with just yet, is I can also modify the script if I wanted to. Let me go ahead and do that one more time. I think I can just select here and then just double click it, and then click on edit. And then this is all JavaScript or a version of JavaScript, so you can see that we have an enter method, we have an exit method, we have a function for Bob, and also for spinning. Let me go ahead and do that. And you can change it, you can look at the documentation that they have available. But the cool thing that I'm gonna show you now is how I can actually look at this in, in my HoloLens. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the right. Let me go ahead and put these right here. You can see that I'm projecting into the HoloLens and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the hierarchy view here. Hopefully I can see everything that is happening. So you can see that I am the one that is connected right now on the HoloLens screen, I'm gonna go ahead and you know, lower my visor, and I'm gonna go ahead and select the, the Enclo experience. It's going to go ahead and open it up. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna try to connect, well, it's actually gonna to connect to Enclo as, as, as long as I have everything set up correctly. And the cool thing about this is I'm gonna be able to see the experience running. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna focus on this area so that we can see everything. I'm also going to go ahead and move my, my monitor away so you guys can see it. So as you guys can see, I can see the spaceship is currently rotating, right? I can look at the frog. We can look at some of the particles, the amazing particle effects that are, are shown. So let's say that I wanna go back into the, the actual editor and make a change. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the editor here and you know resize it. So let's go ahead and make the spaceship giant. So I'm gonna go ahead and, let me go ahead and get close here. 
And one of the things that I'm going to have to do is, I think if I make a giant right now, it's not going to work because I have a script associated with it. But that's fine. We can just go ahead and make a giant. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it towards me. And then we can also move it up a little bit. And I'm going to maybe, let's go ahead and tilt it just a tiny bit, right? Now we're going to go back into the experience. And I'm going to go ahead and, let me see if I can just dismiss this menu. And see if I can go ahead and, let's go ahead and find include. Go into my apps and then click on or select include. And you can see that now I can see the spaceship. I'm actually going to go ahead and stand up. You can see the spaceship is showing and that all happened in real time. So because it's only me right now, it's going to be really hard for me to make changes as I'm looking at it. But everything happens in real time. And that's one of the big features about, you know, using Enclu for, for collaboration. So I think for now, I'm just going to, I'm going to go ahead and keep it simple. That's kind of like an intro to Enclu and how Enclu works. So if you guys have additional questions, let me know. And I know that you may have a lot of questions because I didn't really scratch the surface, but I'm going to be showing you a lot more on how this works. And in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on showing you how to add a scene from scratch. We're going to be creating and adding elements, creating an experience and looking at that experience from the HoloLens. So thank you very much, guys.